don't know about you, but I personally like watching the show Shark Tank sometimes. It's a more popular show nowadays, and if you watched it before, you know how it works. People come out and they'll pitch a product that they have, and, and they do it in front of these millionaires and these billionaires, and, and they'll tell them whether they'll give them backing for their products, and sometimes they leave mad, other times they leave securing a deal. And one of the interesting things about how they come up with a price to sell their products for is they ask several questions to determine the value of something, to see how much money they're going to need to mass produce that item and how much money they need to sell one unit for. And as I was watching it one time, I thought to myself, as preachers do when they watch normal shows, how much, I thought, how would I put a value on the church? This evening, we're going to ask a few questions quickly to see how we would come to that conclusion. You see, one of the first questions that they ask is, what does it cost to produce? If you are going to make a product, you need to know the answer to this question. What does it cost to produce? Because if it costs more to produce than what you are asking for that product, you're probably not going to be in business for very long. And so you need to know what does it cost to produce. When it comes to the church and what it costs to produce, it's somewhat a, a tough question and, and hard to answer in some ways because you really could not put a value on it. And I know where you want to go in your minds, and we'll get there, Acts 20. In verse 28, Jesus purchased it with his own blood. But you know, way before that verse was even written, all the way back to Genesis 3, God approached Eve and asked her after man entered and allowed sin into this world, he asked her, what have you done? I believe it would be fair to say that the only person that truly knew the answer to that question was the one asking it because it was because of what that man did what that woman did in that garden that allowed for another garden to happen many years later and so in the very same chapter where sin enters into the world in that very same chapter the answer to that horrible tragedy is given. And so from Genesis 3.15 all the way through the Old Testament, everything was pointing to Jesus. There was a reason for everything that we read until Christ would finally go to the cross and die for us. And that is when we get to Acts 20 and verse 28 where we see His purpose in doing all of it. To feed the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. What did it cost to produce? Every single animal that was ever killed, it cost their lives. What did it cost to produce? It cost Abraham leaving his home and his family. What did it cost? It cost Jacob wrestling with that angel. What did it cost? And you could go on and on all throughout these events that were leading to something. And what was it? The purchase of the bride of Christ with the blood of Jesus Christ. A second quick question that they may ask is how unique is your product? In other words, can I get what you're offering anywhere else in the world? It's a, it's a very important question when it comes to how much you are going to ask for an item. Can I get your product anywhere else in the market? You see, if I was going to sell shoes, I'm kind of limited there, because I can ask whatever I want for the shoes, but if it's more than the competitor, the other person's probably just going to walk down the road and get the shoes for half price. How about when it comes to the church? Brethren, there is only one of them. Matthew 7, 16 and verse 18, And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. I will build my church, Ephesians 3 and verse 4. There is only one body, Ephesians 1, verses 22 through 23. Jesus is the head of the body. And so when it comes to the asking the value of the church, we need to know something. 
It is very valuable because if it were ever out of existence, there is nothing, nothing that could replace it. Another question that they are asked is how quickly do your buyers need what you are selling? I read an article recently about Fred Smith. And the article stated that Fred Smith, when he presented his ideas to his business professor in college, actually received a failing grade. And his business professor looked back at him and said, you're mistaken. You don't understand. No one will actually pay more, spend more money just to get something overnight. We all know that he was quite wrong. How quickly do your buyers need what you are selling? If you look at 2 Corinthians 6 in verse 2, and if you want to know the value of the church, just look at this passage. For he saith, I have heard thee in the time accepted. In the day of salvation I have succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. You want, you want to be saved? When? Maybe tomorrow, maybe next week, maybe, maybe next month. Let, let me ask you this this evening. If we could get every single person that died outside the body of Christ yesterday, and I know we can't, but if we could, and we could sit them down in this room tonight, and I made a statement like I just did to you. Behold, today, now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. Having known what they saw already, how many more words do you think I could get out of my mouth before people started lining up, ready to obey the gospel? We would be busy all night. How quickly do your buyers need what you are selling? Finally, they ask, is this a fad item or something that's going to last? I remember growing up, we had these things called Beanie Babies. I don't know how many people remember those. And I was going to bring up a different analogy about pottery down here and how much people spend on pottery, but I I didn't want to step on any toes, so I decided to go with the Beanie Babies. But uh, if, my mother-in-law is here too, so I... (laughs) Oh, I like your cooking, so I want to want to continue. But I I thought about the Beanie Babies, and we were growing up. We had so much fun with these, and and I remember though, some people thought they would potentially retire off these Beanie Babies. That one day they were going to be antiques, and they were going to be very rare. And, and some parents thought that this this is the way that they were going to pay for their children's college one day. Well, I heard that there was one VBS down south, and for the final night as a prize, if you made it all the way through Beanie. The VBS, an older lady of the congregation brought a whole basket of Beanie Babies to give to each kid that attended. Every child went home with a Beanie Baby. You know why? Because they were pretty worthless now. What about the church? In other words, if I give it my all, if I'm all in, if I decide to obey the gospel, and he adds me to the group of the saved people, and I invest all of myself, to to spread the borders of the kingdom, and this is what I do, how long is this kingdom going to last? Daniel 2 and verse 44 says, forever and ever. What else in life can you say that about? I mean, when you think about what people have done over the course of history, rather than defy the name of Jesus and his bride, it shows us that this is not just a fad item. It shows us this is not just something that's cheap. It's not something that we can have when we want, that we can take and and leave, that, that we can come and go, that we can treat as so many other things. It's something that is going to last forever. This evening, if you're not a member of the Church of Christ, do you want to be? You will never find anything that is better. You can come forward as we sing this invitation song. And the one thing that we will ask you is, do you believe that Jesus is the Christ? And you know what you'll say to that? Yes, I I believe. And then we'll say back to you, well, based upon this confession, we will baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
and your sins can be washed away. And that person that you came in here today as, he's going to be dead and gone forever. And that new person will rise out and walk away and your sins will be gone and you will finally be in the bride of Jesus Christ. Maybe this evening you're already in the bride, but you're struggling. Behold, today is the day of salvation. Come forward as together we stand and as